Welcome to part 25 of our Clone Wars rewrite. We are currently rewriting the character of Ahsoka Tano, and in this video we'll be focusing on Season 3, Episode 17, where we wrap up the Mortis arc, showing Ahsoka's lingering fear, and whether it sticks with her or not. Thanks for joining us. just a heads up. If you're interested in seeing the bloopers for this video and or hearing us discuss more of the episode, you can find the full version of this analysis over on Patreon. And without further ado, let's get into it. Okay, season three, episode 17, Ghosts of Mortis. We wrote in the argument against Ahsoka. Ahsoka is turned into a master mechanic for one episode. She's put in charge of fixing the ship when they are short on time instead of Anakin, which happens to be convenient for the plot. Obi-Wan finds Ahsoka sleeping when she should be fixing the ship. She says she was almost done, so I guess she decided that meant they had time for her to stop and take a nap. When Obi-Wan warns Ahsoka that Anakin has joined the sun and she must disable the ship through gritted teeth, she complains, but I just finished putting it back together. And that's exactly how she said, and that's not how she said, I am in a this. It is early, sort of. I'm not actually going to say what time it is because then everyone's going to be like, that is not early at all. <laughs> Anyways, um, when Ahsoka goes to help Obi-Wan and she finds him struggling, to climb a sheer rock face directly over boiling water, or boiling water, boiling lava. <laughs> this is gonna be great. Um, boiling lava, she casually clips, quips, nice job, I can't, I cannot <laughs> right now. Oh my goodness, did I, I think I said casually, she callously, callously quips. Oh my goodness, we're, we're doing, we're doing good in the good things. And then we're going to go over here, we're going to press play. Oh wait, I don't have uh, a stupid quote. Oh no, we need a stupid quote. He who seeks to control fate shall never find peace. This is obviously directed at Anakin. You don't say, okay, stupid quote. Never underestimate the power of stupid people in large groups. There you go, <laughs> TCW fans. Uh, nothing in the world is more dangerous than sincere ignorance and conscientious stupidity. Yep, TCW fans. That was by Martin Luther King, according to this website. Wow. This is where I'm looking at. This is Martin Luther King here. This is Martin Luther King Jr. here. So there we go. Um, going back here, though. The scales now tip toward the dark side. Our three warriors must guard against attack as they plan their escape. Yeah, no, it's very clear. It's like, okay, they gotta get out of here. ASAP. And these two guys are just they're chilling. They're lounging around. I guess they're guarding against attack by looking through a, a a narrow opening on one side of the ship yeah obi-wan could have easily done that by himself while anakin and ahsoka work on the ship or or rather anakin works on the ship because he's far more experienced and skilled and ahsoka could be sitting right outside the little hole in the floor there, handing him things and watching out the front in case the sun comes through the front. There you go, that too. Because he, liter he literally just appeared out of nowhere last time inside the ship while yeah. it was flying. So I'm pretty sure he could get in from any direction. Like, you know, maybe if he had more eyes in more directions. I'm just saying it would probably be a good idea. Probably. I'm tired of how unreliable the weather is here. They're talking about the Some weather! Some might say that's part of the appeal. Oh. You did well, Anakin. It's another case of that urgency, urgency, urgency. No urgency. <laughs> they do this so much. Yeah. And if we stay, we may be used to the dark side's advantage. Yeah, so you should go! Well, We've got two cracked Shiloh pins, a busted power converter, the engine should be fired twice to dump debris, and the backup vents need charging. Sounds terribly downbeat. 
And again, we've never seen any mechanical know-how from Ahsoka before this episode. Well, that's not actually true. In season two, she's helping Anakin go over Bane's ship. That's the one that springs to mind. Well, they weren't really working on it, though. They were just examining it for, like, clues as to where Bane had been. I mean, fair, but at the same time, like, there's also that moment in season one, episode 19, Storm Over Ryloth, where Anakin's working on the thing, and she comes up, and he's like, hey, hand me the tool, and she, like, like, I guess, given Anakin's skill, I feel it's fair to assume that he has passed his knowledge down to her so like i would not expect her to be a prodigy the way he is but i feel like what she's doing here isn't prodigy level stuff but it's not too far-fetched this far along in the series with the little hints that we've been given before this i think it's fair to say yeah she would be able to do this my beef with it is that she should not be able to do it as well as Anakin can do it, so Anakin should be the one doing it. And there's also the fact that, like, we never got to see Anakin actually teaching her these skills because we never see Anakin teach her anything except vague yeah. stuff like, oh... You should go study in the library. <laughs> or she says, no, can I can I go do some studying in the library? But she's not actually doing studying in the library. She's looking for a, a thief. There's really no training of any kind that we see. It has to be inferred. Part of what bugs me about the scene, other than what we've already talked about, is that, yeah, Ahsoka's kind of like when he's Price like, oh, that's, that's pretty downbeat. Then she she gives him this smug, sassy look there. And again, in a vacuum, if she was a better character, that wouldn't bother me at all. I think it still would bother me, honestly, because it's just completely out of place, given their situation. I meant more in the in her attitude toward him, but you're you're correct to that. In the context, it's out of place. The, the urgency, 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 no urgency. Danger, danger, no danger. We're all just smug and casual and uh, chill. I can reroute the primary initiator, weld the dampening vents, and that might give us enough power to leave the atmosphere. After that, I have no guarantee she'll hold together. We'll take our chances. Better than staying here. Where are you going? To see the father. I'm not convinced that the sun will be contained here without our help. Anakin, if I don't get the father's blessing to leave, it'll haunt me forever. I feel like the way Ahsoka delivers her lines, like just, you know, it's matter of fact, it's confident. Like I have, I don't have a problem with that. But this, this point in the series, I would, I would expect a little bit of that. The bigger context, how they're all just kind of like, yeah, okay, this is business as usual. I mean, I guess it is business as usual for them, but at the same time, this is not business as usual. Are you kidding me? Nope. Literally just take out that smug smile she gives. That's all I'd change. Yeah, I would probably have it what we kind of talked about that Anakin and Obi-Wan are, are keeping watch on the other side of the shit. Like, like show some tension. Maybe put a little more, like, shortness in, in Ahsoka's tone. Just kind of like this and this and this rather than, well, and this and this and this, right? Because they're all eager to get out of there. They're all worried about the sun suddenly popping up inside the ship. Then again, if you have that kind of like, we're tense, this is urgent, and then Anakin's suddenly like, I'm just, I'm just gonna pop out and talk to the fod, okay? Then that feels completely out of place. What if he's by the door and Obi-Wan's in the ship in like looking out the other side or, or whatever, and you, yeah, you, you just kind of have some moments that kind of focus on Anakin and show that like, he's not really watching for the sun. He's more lost in thought. Maybe even have it that someone tries to talk to him and he's like, wait, what? And then, yeah, when Obi-Wan's like, hey, what's what's going on? He's like, hey, I'm not so sure. 
that we should be leaving yet and then yeah kind of like they have it already then he finally is like you know what no i can't i can't go until i talk to the father first might i suggest less sleeping and a little more work oh sorry master kenobi we need to change plans you must focus on the firing drives disengage them but i'm almost finished putting this chunky back together and now just do as i say oh. You're the boss. I guess. It's just so casual. Like, the, the impression I think we're supposed to be getting there is that she passed out from exhaustion. But it's like, if she's that tired, then why aren't Obi-Wan and Anakin that tired as well? There was no indication earlier that she was that tired. Yeah, the, the very last scene we saw, and of course we don't know how much time has passed, but I'm assuming it's not hours and hours and hours, because we're not given that impression. But yeah, she was all like, oh, yep, blah, 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 blah. Like, it, it wasn't like, and um, uh, this, and oh, uh, that, and right, like, there's no sign of fatigue. And then, yeah, now she's just suddenly taking a nap. Yeah, it's just so tired. And it's like, and if she, if she was that tired, then why didn't Obi-Wan kind of like sooner be like, hey, how about I like take over for you? Because I would assume that Obi-Wan has some mechanical skills because so I kind of get the impression that like the Jedi kind of have to learn that kind of thing because they're all over the place and they they need their things working. Yeah, yeah. Can't be like, hey, I'm kind of stuck in the middle of uh, nowhere here. <laughs> can someone, can someone come pick me up? Send a mechanic. Yeah. So <sighs> get rid of the stupid nap thing. Yeah, I would not include that. And it's really pointless. Why not just have her, her working? And he's like, hey, how's it coming? She's, oh, I'm almost finished. And then he's like, you know what? Maybe we should be going at this from a different angle and and you know do this and that, right? And then she's like, but. But I just said I'm almost finished. Yeah, I don't mind her kind of questioning that, but the whole, oh, okay, you're the boss. Way too casual. Way too casual. Yeah, and especially when Obi-Wan is just now suddenly leaving without yeah, explaining- Yeah, that should put her even more on edge. What, she's gonna be here it, what completely he's doing. alone, and she's already been kidnapped by the sun in the previous episode, and a lot of crazy, terrifying stuff went down in that episode. Yeah. Actually, let's start talking about our, our fixed version, because in, in the last episode, she died. <laughs> Yep. And she she knew about it because like we, we almost get the impression in this version that she she doesn't realize that she died. So in, but in our version, she definitely does. So I would kind of have this kind of underlying tone that she is doing this to keep her mind busy so that she's not sitting in Anakin's shoes with nothing but time to think. Oh, yeah. We wouldn't necessarily have to show her being like, hey, can I do that instead of you? But yeah, I would I would really ha have this kind of like very intentionally focused kind of vibe from her. And then I don't think she really notices when Anakin leaves. But yeah, definitely when Obi-Wan is, is leaving here, do we want to have her be like, hey, where are you? What's going on? Why are you leaving? Don't leave. <laughs> do we want to have something like that yeah or definitely here let's just just see what happens here oh yeah where's he... anakin oh yeah he walks he out came the to for guidance, suddenly there but at the crossroad only he can choose where has he gone to the will of the dark side okay so i guess obi-wan is leaving to get anakin so yeah maybe she doesn't notice when anakin leaves and then when obi-wan goes to leave she's like wait where are you going and he's like, well, I have to go get Anakin. You know, we've got to go. And she's like, wait, Anakin left? And he's like, yes, and I must go get him. Right. And then and that 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 doesn't really leave her with a choice, right? Like she can't ask Obi-Wan to stay because yeah, he's got to get Anakin so they can leave. Maybe what she, uh, happens is she kind of follows him to the door and then shuts it behind him. I don't know, because now I'm thinking, well, then she would see him talking to the father. Do we want her to overhear what the father says? Because part of part of what we wanted was for her to kind of, you know, she's learning Anakin is the chosen one and how is she dealing with that information? I think like if we did have Ahsoka overhear it, it'd more so kind of lend to the fear factor, like, oh dear, Anakin, 
went to a dark side well this uh this is not good like we could have it that she's still kind of like well maybe maybe you can just like you know contact anakin and, and get him to come back and then she hears that and she's like okay crap you you re- you've got to go otherwise we could just have it that she sees him talking to the father but she can't hear what they're saying but she sees him point to where the dark side well is so that when obi-wan calls her later and he's like hey i need a ride now it's like oh she she knows the direction to go because of that oh okay yeah and then she she kind of shuts and locks the door behind him the way i see it if we were not supposed to interfere ahsoka and i wouldn't be here in the first place look after the ship i'm going to find anakin And again, she's just like so casual. She's just like kind of standing there like, oh, whatever. And then. And in this version, like, why did she even come out? Other than be there for Obi-Wan to tell her to do what she's already (laughs) doing. Oh my goodness. goodness. So do we just want to keep it the way we already changed it and just cut that? Well, I don't mind if the way, because the way we're changing it kind of follows the same pattern that like. He tells Obi-Wan and then it cuts to Anakin and then it cuts back to them. And then we have the last little bit there. Like, that's fine. Like, I don't know how it would actually moment for moment play out. But yeah, in in general, it would still follow what we, we discussed. Finally, this is Jedi Shuttle 634 calling on all secure channels for help. Do you read? I repeat, we are stranded and need immediate evac. Come in, please. I would give her a little more urgency there. Instead of being like, oh, finally. She's like, oh, finally. And then, yeah, her tone of voice. Put a little more like, you know, we're calling all evac. Like, someone come in, please. Did I say calling all evac? I think I just did. But you know what? (laughs) What? I just tired. Any success with Anakin? Quite the opposite. Master, what are you saying? Anakin has joined with the sun. Do not engage him. But- Just do as I say. You have to disable the ship. But I just finished putting it back together. Ahsoka, please listen. We have to prevent Anakin and the sun from leaving. Yes, master. Ahsoka, what have you done? Ahsoka! Definitely get rid of her stuff, but I just finished putting it back together. I would kind of have her kind of start to repeat Obi-Wan's words back to him, kind of like in this state of surprise. She's like, disable the- what? And then, yeah, he continues with his bit, and then I change the tone of her yes master to- Yeah, no, it suddenly goes really, like, dark. Yeah. It goes from, like, weird. worried to yes master. <laughs> it's like, what? What? Yeah. What the? Why? It's it's not like a yes master. It's yes master. Why? Why? I was actually gonna say maybe what we should do is maybe before Obi when he's he's telling her to 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 change up how they're um, doing it, he tries reaching Anakin on the wrist com, and Anakin doesn't answer, and that's why he starts to walk out with the speeder thing, and then. Ahsoka's like, uh, where where are you going? Because yeah, I, I just find it weird that like he doesn't even try to to contact Anakin. He's just suddenly like, I'm gonna go search and find him and bring him back. He's lucky that the father was there to point him in the right direction. Mm-hmm. Although he but, did he did see what direction Anakin went in, didn't he? Well, yeah. The father well, well, kind of go- narrowed it down for him a bit more though. So yeah, this scene though, other than. Changing again, just tweaking her tone, making it a little more urgent, fearful, taken aback. Then I think I think it's good. Again, like it kind of shows that when just... Ahsoka is in the role of side character, then yeah, she's she's a lot better than she normally is. Way, way better. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Nice job. Oh, I just want to punch her. What is with 
the tone and the attitude yeah like what the heck it's totally out of place okay so uh you just ran away from your master who has turned to the dark side and you're all like hmm, yeah hey nice job like what the heck what oh yeah i was going to say um i did like her escape yeah she just grabbed the thing that would disable the ship without damaging it right like it's just a plug and play now and then she hides on the ceiling hops down around him hops on his speeder and goes like i think like that's smart and fun has yeah, that tension in there and like i like that it was well done and then you have this i think i would have her go faster though like because she hops on the speeder and then she takes the thing out and looks at it and like yeah, i did that and then <laughs> turns around and goes it's like I, th I think we could have gathered that she she took the thing when anakin goes and like there's that empty spot there and then he says ahsoka right like yeah or maybe have it that then it goes back to her and you see her you know driving and she pulls the thing out and puts it back in her pocket like if you really really want to show it it's about that that urgency keeping that sense of urgency and tension and like rather than dropping it all the time and like mm. i understand in a show for kids you don't always want to have this like super ramped up urgency but i think what we're going for our target audience for for our version would be like pg-13 i don't think we go that far well i think that's what this should be if we're being basically the same maybe even a little more like intense then i would think it would be pg-13 what took you so long what's the, yeah that the just kind of shruggy smile as you said and... the shuttle's going nowhere without that good that gives us some time to rescue they Anakin. Like so smug. This should not be her attitude. Again, they have to spell it out for the audience. We we couldn't have already understood from Anakin's anger and the fact that like she had been told to disable the ship. If, like we couldn't put two and two together that she disabled the ship. We have to have her spell it out. Hey, yeah, I took that out so that the ship won't go anywhere. <laughs> oh, yeah, no, treating the audience like they're stupid again. Yeah. Wonderful, fantastic. Would we fantastic. have Obi-Wan's line about like, oh, it took you long enough, right? Like, I feel like that only makes sense because she's being all like, casual oh nice job so i i think i would remove it basically i'd have it that she you know you you show obi-wan climbing and then you show her you know cresting and then she's like obi-wan and she zooms down there and gets under him here like you know helps him onto the thing and she and i i disabled the the ship like you told me to and um he's like okay good that gives us enough time to to rescue anakin and yeah they they go i have erased that time we shall never know. Master! Well, you will, I won't. How did they know to come here? Are you Lots of convenience. <sighs> I mean, like, you could infer that, like, they were coming here to see the father, to ask him for help in finding Anakin again. Maybe before they take off, he's like, oh, great, that gives us enough time to... To rescue Anakin and she's like but where is he and Obi-Wan's like we'll have to go see the father and ask him to help us or something like that and then yeah they show up here and I, I liked I liked her her master right like I like that like those, yeah that was good little moments and it's like why are they only little moments yeah, like, as a writer, you can't overlook the little moments. The little moments are important, and they lend to the big moments. This is pretty. General Skywalker, come in. You were off the scopes there for a moment. You'll need to explain. You wouldn't believe me if I told you. We're coming in now. Yeah, so Ahsoka is 
hardly in like I, I don't even know if there's a spot where we could give her like something to learn here like it's, it's just such a non episode in her regard um but i mean like that's how she's been through most of it we like we've been giving her more but really throughout this entire arc she's just there and it doesn't make sense we were talking at the beginning of the arc that we should probably end this episode with them telling the council because i think i think we were like we should have them forget this knowledge like it's just it's too ridiculous for them to keep yeah i know they they finally use it again in season six but it's i Feel like there would be another way to do that arc if you really had to do that arc <laughs> without this preamble. That before father dies, he gathers all of them close to him and then he does his, you know, forehead boop thing to all of them and then they pass out and then everything collapses and then they're, they're on their ship. Then it would suggest, hey, this did happen. They just don't remember as opposed to the other ending where it's like, wait, did that even happen? So then you would have this kind of thing where like the audience knows it happened, but the characters don't. So we were going to have it that because like they were sent out to investigate because they, they were getting a signal from an old Jedi code that hadn't been used in a long time. So we were going to end the arc with them in front of the council being like, we didn't find anything. So Rex wakes them up. He's like, hey, you were off the scopes for a moment. They're like, what What? What happened? He's like, okay, okay, we're, we're coming in. And then it jumps to a scene of them on the bridge, you know, hologrammy thingy with the, you know, head council members, whatever. And they're like, well, there's, there's nothing here. And maybe Yoda comments as strange this is, I don't know. But yeah, that that's how the, the arc ends. I just feel like it's such a lackluster ending, right? Like with the first two episodes, we did some really interesting things with Ahsoka. And then suddenly this episode, it's like, yeah, you can tell she's still scared, but there's just so little of her. I think part of the issue is that because we are focusing on Ahsoka in this rewrite, she's kind of the main character for us. Whereas in TCW, Anakin is the main character in these episodes. Ahsoka is a side character in these episodes. The next thing we're doing is the Citadel arc. I am so happy because we love that arc. It's I, great. Uh, I think I'm going to go dig myself a six foot hole in the ground and lie. The ground is frozen. Yeah, I'm going to dig myself a six foot <laughs> hole in the frozen ground and lie in it. Okay. 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 So that was season three, episode 17, Ghosts of Mortis. Unfortunately, there wasn't much to do with Ahsoka beyond showing her lingering fear while the arc wraps up. But if you enjoyed, be sure to drop us a like, share with your friends, and consider subscribing so you don't miss future installments. As always, comment below letting us know what you think of our rewrites and what you would do differently. Your support on Patreon would be much appreciated. You can find a link in the description. And next up, we'll be tackling season three, episode 18, The Citadel. So be sure to join us for that.